Bismillah, assalamu alaikum, and a very warm welcome this evening to Living the Life on Thursday, the 24th of January with Hassana Amaji. And Brother Rahim Jung, thank you very much for tuning in. Now, last night marked the launch of a new campaign that could go down in history. Enough food for everyone if is a joint project which aims to significantly raise the awareness of global hunger. Joining us shortly, three individuals who represent organizations involved in this very noble cause. So please welcome to the show, Sadia Sajid, Shahida Diwan, and Arwa Ibrahim. Salam alaikum, Thank sisters. Jazakallah khair. This is a fantastic, this is a real in international massive initiative, isn't it? It is absolutely a huge one, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. It's very exciting. Alhamdulillah, well, we're looking forward to hearing about it. Well, also joining us later tonight, a gentleman who's made a huge name for himself within the Nasheed industry. We're so excited he'll be with us later. It's Hamza Namira. That's right. He's going to be joining us in a little while. And that's not all for tonight. We're also joined by the founder of the Muslim Writers Award. He's brought along with him two books that he claims are a fantastic read. And we're going to be finding out more later. But welcome to the show, Irfan Akram. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam. Hey, don't seem to... You haven't got a book on your lap there, huh? No, you've already got those. I'm looking forward to talking about it. Inshallah. Inshallah. Well, we have an absolutely superb green room today, but first, as always, it's our story of the day. You're uh, laughing, I'm brother. I'm laughing because I know your reaction to this one. I know already. Yeah. Well, look, UKBathrooms.com did a survey and they found out that 70% of husbands and wives say that they don't think sharing a toothbrush is unhygienic. And 25% even admitted to sharing a toothbrush. That's a good point. 25 admitted it, but I want to know, did they admit it to the survey or did they admit it to the partners? They probably didn't admit well, yeah. it to each other. It's a little bit worrying for me, I think. <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're not married yet, so you can't imagine yeah, that. Yeah, perhaps. We want to know, not just about toothbrushes, and we know it's very personal, but what would you share? What are you prepared to share with people? Can I give you an example? Yep. When I go to the Middle East, I'm quite happy to sit with ten people that I've never met before mm -hmm. and share a plate of food with them. And we're all eating from the same, and everyone's eating with their hands, and there's quite a lot of, you know, <laughs> going on, and people... And yeah. yet I'll sit there and I'll eat along with their food. But now, would you do that here? No way. Even here, mm -hmm. funny enough, someone shares me a spoon, I'm like, if you've got another spoon, you hesitate do you there. You know, I hesitate. You know, yeah. what I mean? which is strange. It's, it seems that I can do it over there, but not here. So we want to hear what are people happy to share. What about yourself? I mean, yeah. clothes, for instance. Are you happy to? If a sister gave you her hijab, would you be happy to wear that? I think so. I think it depends on who the sister is, how well you know them. Like I wouldn't mind sharing with my sisters, but if a random, you know, sister on the street just said, "Oh, here's a hijab for you," I'd kind of hesitate there before you go. taking hesitate. it. That's right. But I think it comes down to what would you share and what wouldn't you share as well, what because you, share, yeah. you know, there's some things. I remember we were talking earlier about communal misworks and mosques. Oh, and <laughs> as many of you must have seen this. A yeah. lot of the brothers will have seen this. When you go into the wudu area in the mosque, there's a communal miswak, mm. a miswak that everyone can use. Not for me, I have to say, <laughs> not for me. Although yeah. I know the companions to share as well, so you yeah. can't criticise it, but I just can't bring myself to use it. Mm, well, there's actually a really beautiful story from the, um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he used to drink out of the same cup as Aisha and right. and he actually used to turn, turn the cup the glass, yeah. so that he would drink on the yeah. exact same spot. Yeah. So it is from the Sunnah. So we do want to hear from you, what are you prepared to share? Now That's I right. asked our sound man Ash about this. I said, Ash, would you wear a jumper I just took off? He said, no problem, bruv. And I said, would you wear my shirt if I took that off my back? He went, maybe. <laughs> I said, what about a vest? He went, now you've gone too far. Yeah. You see, he wouldn't wear a vest, but he'd be happy to wear a shirt. Mm. What would you be happy to share with somebody, whether it's food, whether it's a miswak, whether it's a, a hijab? That's what we want to hear. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. And remember, you can drop us an email, post a message on Facebook, and of course, you can always tweet us. Full details coming up right now. Here at Live in the Life, we want to hear from you. To get in touch, tweet us at Islam Channel, hashtag LTLife, facebook.com forward slash Islam Channel. You can also email us, liveinthelife at islamchannel.tv. We look forward to hearing from you. So that's how to get in touch and we'll be reading your messages during the course of the show. Now, here in the UK, we throw away millions of tons of food every year, whilst a billion people around the world are left hungry. These are just one of the many shocking statistics. Enough Food for Everyone, IF, is an immense coalition campaign. Its aim, to end world hunger. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, that gives us a flavour of what this historic campaign is all about. And it's being supported by a number of organisations. We're pleased to be joined tonight by three of them. Welcome to the programme, Sadia Sajid, Shahida Dewan, and Arwa Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So we've got Sadia here, and then in the middle, Shahida, and then on the far left over there, Arwa. Well, Jazakallah khair, welcome to the show. Now, you represent three organisations that have joined in, but this is a much, much bigger campaign. If I can start with you, Sadia, how big are we talking about when we look at this campaign? We're talking um, sort of like the next generation beyond make party history where that was like a mass mobilisation, so many people were on the streets. But inshallah, what we all represent is actually bringing Muslims into that picture now. Um, over 100 organisations are involved, subhanAllah, and in terms of Muslim organisations, there's massive representation in terms of Muslim demographic in, in the British public. And which three organisations do you yourselves represent? You yourself are with uh, Made in Europe, Shahida? Islamic Relief. And Human what? Appeal International. Human Appeal International. Yeah. Great. Now, how did this project actually come about? Shahida, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, basically, um, the leading organisations, you know, the likes of uh, Christian Aid, Oxfam and uh, Action Aid, uh, initi initiated this, to be uh, absolutely honest. And then they basically shared the news with, uh, you know, various organisations. And so Islamic Relief and Made and everyone came on board. Basically, the premise is, it's scandalous that, that while there's so much food that a billion people should go to bed hungry, it really is just scandalous. I mean, to think tonight... 900 million, to be absolutely precise, 900 million people will sleep hungry while we're on full stomach. Just sounds just so unjust and uh, so unfair. And, and, the, and the, the good news is that you can actually do something about it. It can't be prevented. So th basically that's the premise. You know, it, it's outrageous. We're in the 21st it's, century, for heaven's sake. It's know. almost more than outrageous, isn't it? Because it's, it's, it's almost worse than the people are going to bed hungry. Because they're going to bed hungry whilst half the world are obese. It's more than that we've just got enough to eat. We're yeah. eating more than enough and, and, and we're throwing things away as well. Arwa, what sort of initiatives are being planned? How are these organisations, who are largely NGOs, aren't they, NGOs and charities, how are they going to get this across to the people who matter, who I, I suppose basically is a combination of the public and politicians? Well, the whole idea behind this is it's, it's, a, it's a very big campaign. And as Sadia mentioned and Sh Shahida mentioned, we're 100 uh, NGOs, 100 charities around uh, the UK and the idea behind this is to bring awareness about what's happening because it is scandalous, it's shocking to know that 50% of the food that's produced around the world is yeah. thrown away, yeah, it's, it's gone amazing. to waste and um, what was it, 10 billion pounds worth 10 billion pounds of food is thrown away just in the UK yeah. and there is so much to be done about it there is so much we can do about it and it is part of our religion to work together to put our hands together and to change this because we are in the 21st century and it's not acceptable whatsoever for us to be in this state you know we, we featured this a little while ago actually on on living the life about the amount of waste and the scholar who was with us that day he took a verse from the Quran and Ethan he said that those who waste are the brothers of shaitan that's, what, that's how it's viewed in Islam. So it's, it's an appalling thing to waste that much food. Now, coming back to you, Sister Sadia, of course we know that all of these organisations are coming together. Is the main purpose of the campaign to just raise awareness or is it actually to get food out there to those people who really need it? It's, there's two levels <coughs> of the whole campaign. The first thing is to first educate people on what are the complexities. Why is global hunger still an issue in the 20th, mm. 20th century, 21st century, actually? So that's the first thing, is first let's raise awareness, educate the masses, and then mobilise the masses to put pressure on the world leaders, because this year is a very, very unique year in the, in the sense that, again, you know, the UK are going to be presiding over the G8. That's right, yeah. So we have, you know, the main influential world leaders at our doorstep, and that's uh, the time to actually react. And that really is. Them. I mean, I remember the Make Poverty History campaign, which you alluded to earlier. In fact, I made a film for Islam Channel about that. We, we went up there, yeah. and we went up and we went round um, Edinburgh. Mm. There was supposed to be an enormous ring of people all dressed in white around yeah. Edinburgh, showing their solidarity. Mm. And there were campaigns all over the world. I mean, Sister, Sister Shahida, if I can ask, are there same sort of events being planned this time? Because that really did manage to capture the public imagination. Uh, absolutely. I mean, firstly, Islamic Relief was uh, pivotal in mobilising the Muslim community and taking them all the way to Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, we campaigned very heavily, and that was the first taster, I think, in the Muslim charity sector. It was. To it was campaign quite new at that time, I On remember, real yeah. root issues, you know. Um, definitely, we have got so much activities planned. And, but, you know, the key thing is to check, you know, Human Appeal website, MADE website, Islamic Relief website. Already we've managed to sign something like... 25,000 people. I mean, have you got the latest figure? I think it's, it's, it's hitting yeah. every by, second. By second. Yes. What we, yeah, I mean, certainly what we want people to do right now is to 
register their interest to say, look, I'm interested. I want to get involved and do something about it. And yes, there's so much activities planned. I mean, I'm sure MAID is planning things in human appeal. I mean, Islamic Relief is certainly planning things up and down the country. We've got something like 4,000 volunteers of whom 2,000 of those volunteers are active. And so in terms of grassroots connections, it's there, it's embedded. People are thirsty to advocate yeah. and go beyond donations. And this is what Islamic Relief is going to hopefully mobilize the Muslim community towards and uh, along with uh, our coalitions. Sister, let's come to you. What are some of the things that people in the community could do, for example, young people? How could they get involved in the campaign? Well, as the, as, uh, as the sisters just mentioned, the first step is going on to a human appeal website, Islamic Relief, or Made in Europe, or just the enough, enoughfoodif.org. Sign up and be part of this. Mm -hmm. The idea, what makes this campaign so special, is it, it's, not, it's not about handing out food, because that's not the issue. It's not like there isn't food available. It's about making this something that is a concern to our policymakers. The G8 Summit is here, and we as a people, we need to bring out our voice and make a difference. We need to be there to make the changes. We have four asks, and maybe we'll be talk about, talking about them in a few minutes. But by getting this across to our policymakers, in changing what policymakers are doing, in changing how taxes are being looked at, in changing how land is being distributed, multinationals, corporations, where, where are they taking us? That will make the change, that will make the difference, and each of us can be yeah. part of it on every level, in stunts, in activities, in trainings, in just being out there and well, voicing your opinion. We're going to come back to you all in just a moment. We're going to feature now, but we want to hear about those four asks, because I know there are four specific areas that we want people to lobby about and to get involved with and really just have that awareness about where they can make change. So we will come back in a minute. But thinking about not wasting, this is a new type of...